Welcome for the lecture of information retrieval. Today, we will be discussing regarding one of the widely used algorithm for clustering in information retrieval domain. Name of the algorithm is single pass algorithm. As the name indicates, this algorithm is capable of forming the clusters of the document from the document repository using single scan just by using single pass or by uh, scanning the document only once it is capable of forming the clusters amongst the document repository so for that how it works is nothing but basically uh, before starting with the working with that this algorithm using this algorithm one needs to provide certain things as a prerequisites for the algorithm so which are the four things which you need to provide in advance before starting use of this algorithm are nothing but number of clusters which were are to be formed then minimum and maximum size of the each cluster in the document uh, which you want to form next threshold value threshold value is nothing but when two documents are to be compared at that time exactly when that document pair of that document is matching above the threshold value mentioned uh, if that is the scenario only then that two documents are allowed to be grouped together and then if that is satisfying that group is satisfying the minimal number of the minimal cluster size only then that cannot then that can be called as a cluster and fourth thing which you need to provide in advance is whether overlap is allowed or not so what exactly is overlap it is nothing but when one document is closely associated or is similar with two multiple groups more than one group in that case whether that document is allowed to be uh, grouped in multiple under multiple clusters or not that you need to mention or you need to decide in advance only then this document will be able to proceed with its work so this is what is about prerequisites and how the, these prerequisites are then used while uh, working of the algorithm that i'll be telling you basically uh, before proceeding with then other things we need to first of all understand what exactly is uh, similarity value and matching value so similarity value is nothing but whenever two documents are taken into consideration for comparison the percentage of matching which we would be finding that is called as similarity value whereas whenever user submits query and uh, against that query whenever any document is similar in whatever percentage is calculated that is called as matching value so here uh, the steps for algorithm given are these one so uh, what it does it first of all starts scanning the documents in the document repository from first document so as we have learned in unit one that no document is stored the way it is in its original format for every document document representative is required to be created i mean every document is required to be mapped in the form of document repository so that mapping is nothing but you need to eliminate unnecessary things out of the document and whatever necessity necessary words uh, remains after uh, applying certain algorithms named as completion algorithm that is called as document representative which actually is the uh, you can call as a gist of the document which gives the intention of the document which gives which describes the context of the document it is speaking about what exactly so and in short by uh, its minimal representation means if you'll compare the size of the document and document representative it is almost uh, 70 percent less in size at least okay so this is how it helps you to uh, cut down unnecessary uh, scans or it, reduces the size of the document to be scanned so we'll come to the point uh, regarding single pass algorithm so how it works is we'll first of all uh, go step by step and then we'll solve an example 
just to uh, I will tell you exactly how these steps are to be correlated and uh, in which scenario how the algorithm is going to perform an actions so the very first thing it, it does is it starts scanning of the document uh, from very first document and for the sake of uh, having certain reference point it assumes that first document is a cluster representative of first cluster then when it goes towards second document now it has a comparison point so it considers uh, sorry it compares the second document document representative 2 with cluster representative 1 which is nothing but the document uh, representative which it has scanned initially previously okay so this is how it starts so what first step says it assigns the first document d1 as a representative of c1 that is cluster 1 then for di means for next number of document representative it calculates the similarity value s with whichever representative it has for example over here c1 representative it has so it will compare that di that is here uh, d2 with c1 okay and if the similarity value is greater than or equal to threshold supplied defined in advance then it groups the document in that cluster it uh, decides to group the document under that cluster okay so that is what is given in step 3 if s max is greater than threshold value st add the item to the corresponding cluster and recalculate cluster representative so why to do this because just for the sake of having some reference point initially cluster so document representative one was decided as a re, cluster representative for that cluster but now there is no need you have another document as well in that group so uh, cluster representative is required to be recomputed on what basis that can be done is nothing but by taking into consideration number of index terms in the document that can be one of the point to decide to which document representative uh, to be declared as a cluster representative <clears throat> and what is given otherwise if uh, that this particular condition is not satisfied then that document representative which is which does not find any group to in which it can be added can is declared as representative for new cluster okay this is how it proceeds and the last step given is what if the item di remains to be cluster return to step two so if further documents are remaining keep on doing these Two, two steps two and three this is how this algorithm works now uh, we'll discuss with our examples that how exactly the things are carried out and how it works so for the sake of simplicity what we'll be doing we'll assume certain document representatives like this is document one document 2 all these are document representatives document 3 document 4 likewise we'll assume six document representatives are there in a repository and uh, we are supposed to calculate uh, whether the certain documents can be clubbed together to form a cluster or not hmm. and uh, we'll assume threshold specified with certain value like 80 percent uh, overlapping is not allowed and uh, number of clusters to be formed are two hmm? if these are the uh, things given and size of cluster uh, is given as uh, as six documents are there let's say three is the document specified so i'll write all that parameters whichever are mentioned over here so number of clusters are three size of each cluster should be at least three and the maximum it can be six let's say three and this is maximum size then uh, next thing which is required to be specified is threshold value for similarity comparison of similarity matrix if it is assumed as let's say point eight that is 80 percent and uh, overlapping is allowed or not answer is no 
if these are the things specified in that case how algorithm starts working that we'll be discussing so whenever it starts scanning the document from left to right at the time what it will do first of all it will take into consideration all these are what document representatives in the repository so it takes into consideration this document representative one and assumes that as cluster representative one it declares this as cluster representative one then next step it moves towards next step so what it does for that it compares document representative two and compares it with cluster representative one okay so this is how it performs the comparison these two documents will get matched and if it its similarity value whatever it would be getting after comparison of this pair of document if it is greater than or equal to threshold specified in that case what it does if this condition is satisfied let's say in that case what it will be doing it will be grouping the document together so if this condition is satisfied then it will group the document into one cluster uh, that cannot be called as a, a cluster right now because we are not aware whether it is going to satisfy with this uh, size of the cluster or not okay so that is why that will be clubbed under one group okay wherein document one is there and document two is there okay these two documents are grouped under one cluster or that two documents are grouped together out initially this was cluster representative now when these two are grouped are marked under one group it requires to what recompute what cluster representative so it recomputes the cluster representative and then decides exactly which cluster can be marked as a cluster representative so if let's say document 2 is having more index terms than that of 1 it can mark this as a cluster representative so let's say i'm marking cluster representative by double line circle so this is cluster representative now but if this does not satisfy this condition this one let's say similarity value between uh, these two documents pair of document is less than that of threshold specified then what it does i've already told you that it makes two separate groups this square indicates let's say group so in that first group there is going to be document one and it will create another group under document two so here this is going to be c1 and this is going to be considered as cluster representative two here otherwise on in initial case what was the scenario only one group is there and this is going to be the c1 cluster representative one all right so if this is going to be the scenario in that case when it will scan third document this third document will get compared with second document so in this scenario this comparison uh, comparison of this particular representative will be done with document representative three and similar sort of condition will uh, condition check will get applied that whether it is uh, having similarity greater than or equal to threshold if yes it will continue uh, grouping of that into the cluster otherwise it will create separate cluster but at the max how many clusters it can create how many representatives it can generate three not more than that hmm? so uh, let's say we'll assume and uh, if another is the scenario in that case if it is this is the condition at first time in that case what it will be doing it will compare this particular document document representative three with c1 and c2 otherwise what will happen it, it is going to get two comparison points c1 and c2 so same condition is required to be applied over here as well if similarity value of is greater than or equal to threshold then group this document with this cluster or group this document three with document representative one otherwise uh, condition is satisfied over here then group it with document two uh, so this is how the things will be carried out 
for all the further documents okay and once all the documents are scanned and it checks that how many groups are formed let's say the scenario one scenario will be considering like the cluster groups it is getting are one group is having two documents and another is having let's say three five and six are the three documents under one group and another document is let's say uh, in another group with number four so if these are the groups it is getting then it cannot declare these three as a cluster representative why because the size minimum size of each cluster the condition which is given over here is three so that is why it it, just, it can just declare this as cluster okay so this will be called as cluster and other three documents will remain unclustered okay this is how this particular algorithm works and let's say if the division is uh, like one to uh, another scenario if we'll take into consideration let's say one group is having four document and another is having uh, three do uh, sorry two document one two three five are the documents in one group and in another group four and six the document is there so obviously how many clusters it would be getting at the end only one you cannot call this as a cluster the way you cannot call here this is a cluster or this is a cluster similarly this cannot be called as a cluster only this it will be calling as a cluster all right and we are assuming here overlap is not allowed so what is that overlap let's say if it is allowed if it is given that instead of no it is given as yes and let's say the document certain document falls under two clusters how it can be how it may happen let's say if this is the scenario and if you're comparing document three with document one and document three with document two and in both the scenarios it is having greater uh, similarity value with both the document ideally that cannot happen but still we'll assume it is happening because uh, if it would be in that way the two and one is are going to be in one group so ideally that is actually not going to happen but let's say if that happens in that case if overlap is allowed if this parameter set is yes in that case that three document will be grouped with both the documents so how the groups are going to be in one document you will be getting one and three and in another document you can rewrite that three two and three likewise okay so uh, the here the number of documents which you would be getting in the clusters are going to be more than that of document which you have in the repository if overlap you are going to allow and many times it creates some sort of it, it may create some sort of conflict so that is why that can be kept as a no okay this is how this single pass algorithm works and uh, because of as it uh, starts working with certain assumption uh, that is why it is able to form the clusters it is able to obtain the clusters in single scan of the document itself okay i hope you have understood what exactly is single pass algorithm how it works and all so we'll be discussing next algorithm in next lecture till that time keep enjoying and learning thank you